This is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. Well, last week we learned how to play an acoustic blues solo composition, and that was very popular. Got a lot of positive response for that. By the way, that lesson was EP243, if you want to look that up. But we're going to do something similar this week, but we're going to use electric guitar. And so I've got a very different style that I'm playing this week, and it's actually coming from two artists. I've been listening to a lot of Ry Cooter, I always do, and a lot of Sonny Landreth. And it's this is a mixture of those two. And I realize that they're both slide players, but they do interesting things with their chords and the way that they construct rhythm. I'm always fascinated uh, when I listen to them play. So what I've done is I've kind of taken influence from both of them. And it's really got kind of a Cajun feel to it. I was going to label this as a Cajun blues, but I thought it'd probably get ripped from the Cajun purists. But to me, it has sort of a Cajun feel to it. So we're going to break this down. Everything that I played note for note, and I'll explain where those notes come from over the course of two videos. In this video, we'll take a look at the first half. If you'd like to watch the second half and get the tablature and the interactive tab viewer for this lesson, you can get that by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP. 244. Alright, so this entire composition is played using hybrid picking. We're going to be picking the bass notes with the right hand, and then we're going to be using our ring finger and our middle finger with the right hand to pluck out the melody. So we're going to be doing both of those things at the same time. Now I realize that some of you have maybe been frustrated with hybrid picking in the past, or maybe you've never tried it. Either way, this is an awesome lesson to jump in and start to really learn and practice it because there's no jam track or any kind of accompaniment needed. This is a standalone composition. So you can set the tempo. That's another nice thing. You can play this thing as slow as you need to and sit around and practice getting that hybrid picking down. And at the end, you'll have a really cool little blues composition that you can play for other people. So it gives you an extra motivation to sit down and learn how to play. So this song is in the key of E. And it starts with the five chord. So I start by going and kind of walk into that, do a little walk up. So that's the open fifth string, first fret fifth string, and then my middle finger goes down on the second fret fifth string, while these two fingers go ahead and complete the B7 chord. And you can look at the tab if you need to, to see how to figure that in more detail. Now I'm giving a little bit of vibrato there as well. That's kind of a Robert Cray style technique where you give vibrato to a chord. Or I think of him when I hear that. And then I go right into the E chord, or the one chord, like this. It kind of falls into place. And the way I'm doing that is an upstroke and a downstroke with the right hand. So the upstroke happens on the open third and fourth string. Just open strings. And then I make an E chord with my left hand and I play a downstroke. Now I'm not playing the entire chord, like all six strings. I'm really just playing strings 6, 5, and 4. So, that's how I start it. And that starts the 1. Now, what happens right there is the beginning of what I'm calling the heartbeat rhythm. And that's this hybrid pick uh, bass line. This is where you're going to be using the pick on that 6 string, that open E string throughout the entire song. Now you're not going to be playing the E string the entire time, but you are going to be playing that same rhythm, that cadence, throughout the whole thing. So, you have... Now that would be a great little loop to start practicing with, just to get, get things going. And you can slow that down and play it as, in as fast or slow as you want. Now here's the first thing we're going to learn. Now notice that bass line happens throughout the whole thing. The other thing I should mention is that I'm using this part of my hand 
to mute the string. You don't want it ringing out. It would be kind of obnoxious. So I'm just letting my hand rest on the strings right back here, right by the bridge, so that it sounds more like a, a bass guitar. It also has more of a percussive element. It sounds more like a snare drum and a bass being played at the same time when you do it that way. Now let me show you how I'm playing this. And then I'll explain where it comes from so that it starts to really solidify in your mind. So I'm using my ring finger, my middle finger with the right hand, and I'm going to be plucking on strings two and three. Now with the left hand, ring finger is on the fifth fret second string while my index finger is on the fourth fret third string. And then I come down and play strings two and three on the second fret. So it's just a bar there, first three strings and the second fret. So we have... And then I do a, a hammer on to the first fret third string. And really, that's just the E chord. I'm, I'm just playing strings two and three out of an E chord. But I'm building into it like this. So play the open string two and three, and then hammer on to the first fret. So all together, that's what that looks like. Now the way that I'm thinking about that, or the way that you should think about that, rather, is to think about that what we're doing from a chord perspective, if you look at that, that's a little E triad there. So remember, we're playing in the key of E, and this is our one chord, so it would be an E chord. So all I'm doing is I'm playing the E chord, and then I'm playing an F sharp minor chord, which is the two in the, in the key of E, so that would be your two chord, and then another E chord. So it's E, F sharp minor, E. But um, instead of playing that entire chord, I'm just playing strings two and three out of the chord. Um, and that'll make sense as we start to unravel this thing because that's what I did the first time through. The second time through, which will be in the next video, I played uh, the top two strings just to give it variety. So that's another little uh, technique that you can use going forward is to play you know, two strings out of a triad and then play the other two strings out of it together and you get this kind of cool harmonized thing. All right, so here's the challenge then. Now that you understand that, let's play that with the bass note. So once you get the bass going, then you fill this in. Now the thing is, obviously with the tablature that you would get as a premium member, that's gonna make this a lot easier. You can slow it down and loop sections and look at all that. but. Uh, if you're not a premium member, I'm going to play through this slowly and I want you to pay attention to where the pick and the pluck, think of it that way, where they're happening at the same time and then the places where they're not happening at the same time. So it would look like this, slowly. Let me do it again. All right, from the beginning. Now watch this. That little, little bass fill lick there. All I'm doing is I'm playing the open sixth string, sliding from the second fret to the fourth fret on the sixth string, second fret, fifth string, fourth fret, fifth string. By the way, that's an awesome little, uh, for, if you're playing in the key of E and you're looking for bass fills like that, you have the, uh, between the second fret and the fourth fret, sixth string, fifth string, and fourth string. There's a, any of that, any notes that you can play from there are gonna work and they're gonna sound awesome. Just keep that in mind if you're wanting to experiment with some different fills that you can do there. Second time through, do you hear that difference? I gave it a little uh, bit of a bluesy, it's really an E7 chord. So all I'm doing there is I'm sliding, I'm still on strings two and three, but I've got my index finger now on the third fret second string, while my middle finger is on the fourth fret third string. But then we go back to the same uh, second fret and back down to the uh, first fret. So. From the beginning, here was what we have.
Notice there's one last note there, that high E string, the one string. And then we go to the four chord. Now that's a technique that I learned from Eric Clapton. And I use that all the time, going from the one to the four chord when I'm playing in the key of E. It's a muted downstroke, an upstroke playing the open third and fourth string. And then I do another downstroke on the third fret, sixth string. And then I played strings five and four, or five, four, and three rather, out of the A chord. So that's five, four, and three. So it goes. Just practice that over and over again. Three. It's a up, down, down. So that's how I'm going to the four chord from the five. And then once I'm in the four chord, it sounds like this. So all I'm doing there is I'm keeping that bar down, but now I'm playing the bass note on the fifth strings, the A string. Same tempo though, or same uh, cadence. Now what I'm doing for that is I've got my middle finger going down on the uh, third fret second string, which is really all you need to do. But instinctively, I also put my ring finger down on the fourth fret fourth string to create that, it's that Keith Richards, you know, one to the four chord. And it's just, I use that all the time. But technically all I'm playing is strings two and three out of that, so you could get by with that. So now for this B part, we're going to play the exact same strings that we played when we played the A uh, part. We were just going to slide everything up two frets, so think of it that way. So now I'm barring the first four strings with my ring finger on the fourth fret while I've got my index finger down on the second fret fifth string. So the bass note is now going to be coming from that second fret, so it sounds like this. So now I've got my pinky that goes down in addition to that. That's on the fifth fret, second string. So it sounds like that. And actually I walk it down then. So we go from the five chord down to the four chord. And again, that's just strings two and three with these fingers while we're picking on the fifth string. And then I hit strings one and two, which are open, with my uh, ring finger and my index finger. My ring finger and my middle finger. So it goes. Now notice my left hand goes ahead and gets into position to make the E chord. Now after that, then I go back to the four chord and I use that same little Clapton transition technique that I just mentioned. And then I use this little blues lick that goes. Let me show you how to play that. That's the open fifth string. We hammer on to the first fret, fifth string, do a pull off, do a hammer on to the third fret, sixth string. So yeah. And it's actually pretty easy to do because you're close to the nut down here and it's just easy to make that, that pull off. And then you play the open sixth string. Now after, while that's ringing out, you go ahead and make the E chord with your left hand so that you can play this. That's the final little piece there. So that's just uh, playing strings one and six. So ring finger is plucking the one string. Now right there, my pinky goes down on the second fret, second string, and I'm plucking that with my uh, ring finger as well and then back to the one string. So let's take it from the five chord we have. All right, there's a lot of information. Let me back up and play through this one more time. I'll play through everything slowly so you have one final reference and then I'll see you in part two. And if you're not a premium member, check out premium membership. It's a great deal. I put out lessons like this every week and I've been doing it for many years now. And uh, lots of learning material. If you're serious about learning how to play guitar, how to improvise, how to write your own music and understand where it all comes from, 
It's a great, uh, great fit for you. I think you'll, you'll appreciate it. ActiveMelody.com. All right, uh, here we go from the beginning.